What's up guys, Bogdan here and welcome to the Import Export Hub channel. Okay, so in today's video I have uh, five products uh, that I think um, are worth considering importing from the United States. Sadly, uh, I have only the trade data between the United States and the European Union, so it's uh, not considering the trade values with other countries outside the European uh, Union trade bloc. Anyway, I hope uh, this is not a big issue and uh, let's start with the first product, which is almonds. And uh, we see here that the exports are close to 1.5 billion euros uh, with uh, Spain, the biggest uh, trading partner, followed by Germany, Italy, the Netherlands and on the fifth place we have France. Now, the figures you are seeing here are not only for uh, national consumption, of course. Lots of the almonds will be processed and then re-exported to other countries, most probably located also in Europe. And uh, the beauty of the European Union trade bloc is that once uh, the product is cleared for uh, import and uh, all the duties uh, paid by the importer, then the re-export towards uh, another European uh, Union uh, country, uh, for example, uh, that product will not be um, submitted to further uh, duties. Anyway, most probably the almonds will be packed as uh, snacks or uh, sell to industrial consumers who will add them in uh, other products like the famous uh, panettone in Italy, for example. The second product is uh, walnuts and here we see that the volumes uh, are uh, a little uh, slower compared with uh, almonds, especially because there are other big exporters like uh, Chile, Australia and uh, Argentina who can deliver uh, quality walnuts also. And uh, here the walnuts have uh, again a clear destination to be put for sale in the supermarkets as they have the quality required by the modern trade activities. So yes, here I think that most, most of the walnuts have a clear destination uh, to be put for uh, sale after they get packed, of course, because for uh, walnuts having an industrial use, uh, especially if you are a manufacturer in Europe, you have uh, closer and maybe cheaper sourcing alternatives like uh, Ukraine, Romania or the Republic of uh, Moldova. So depending on the final use of the walnuts, uh, importers will adapt their sourcing strategies, but uh, nonetheless, the United States is the biggest exporter of uh, walnuts in the world, both in terms of uh, quantity and uh, value. So you should definitely consider the United States as a sourcing country if you want to import uh, walnuts. Moving on to pistachios, uh, the third product, and I promise this is the last snack related product I will talk about today. We see here that the values uh, are again high, more than half a billion euros with the Germany, the biggest importer. And as in the case with the almonds and walnuts, pistachios uh, are also imported and then re-exported or traded mostly on the European market, again, either for retail or for industrial use. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the Netherlands is in this top five list for all three products. So almonds, walnuts and uh, pistachios. And uh, I have to give it to them as they are either one hell of a trading nation or this is just the so-called uh, Rotterdam effect. Uh, it's uh, very difficult for me at this point to tell you exactly what is happening because I've uh, just scratched uh, some uh, time ago this uh, subject about the Rotterdam effect. But uh, maybe uh, I will cover this uh, issue in a separate video because I'm not 100% uh, uh, sure how uh, this uh, Rotterdam effect works. Anyway, uh, what is also interesting for me at least is to see Luxembourg, uh, landlocked country, uh, relatively small with I think more or less 600,000 people, 
importing more than uh, 60 million euros worth of uh, pistachios. And believe me, I've uh, cross-checked uh, the exports of Luxembourg and uh, the export values are far lower than the imports. So from my opinion, it seems that either the people in Luxembourg consume large quantities of uh, pistachios, either the industry absorbs uh, those uh, volumes. It's uh, intriguing for me to see uh, those values and uh, if you have any other idea about what could possibly happen there, please feel free to comment uh, down below. And also, I don't know if you are aware, but uh, another big exporter of uh, pistachio is uh, Iran. Fortunately for the United States, uh, importing pistachios in the European Union from Iran at least involves lots of uh, red tape and uh, quite frequent uh, physical controls. So uh, the idea is that when you hear about the US-Iranian uh, conflict, be sure that the conflict is not only about uh, removing some uh, dictatorship or some nuclear warha warheads and so on. Uh, the problem is uh, more complex and uh, this type of conflict has uh, repercussions also on uh, Iranian pistachio exporters' ability to be competitive on the international market, for example. And I'm sure that uh, pistachios are not the only product affected. Anyway, that's my humble opinion. What I'm trying to say is that when you are in the import-export business, the focus is not necessarily on the smallest price, but you have to consider the duties and also the ease of doing business with that uh, partner. Overall, it might be cheaper to pay a little bit uh, more for your product, but the benefit after because of the free trade agreement in place, the import duties, uh, the ease of doing business uh, and so on. So guys, uh, be smart and uh, be aware of those uh, free trade agreements uh, out there. Also, if you are importing pistachios, be uh, aware that uh, pistachios are prone to aflatoxins contaminations and um, here you have to have in place a good insurance policy with your supplier and uh, my advice is to inspect them prior to export. Uh, the fourth product is uh, raw hides and uh, for me it's uh, not surprising to see Italy and France as uh, the biggest importers given the um, leather industry in those uh, countries especially uh, the, in the luxury, luxury segment and I think that unless uh, the entire planet stops uh, buying leather I think that this is a good product to import from the United States. Of course depending on your location on the glo global value chain you will have to have some uh, good insights on the market like uh, the demand uh, customers uh, uses and so on and uh, my advice is to try to add some value to the raw hides like uh, tanning them according to the customer needs uh, and or something like this also uh, pay close attention to the chemicals used when uh, tanning the leather and uh, other environmental impacts uh, it might have Anyway, uh, if you want to source uh, raw leather, I think that the United States uh, are a good place to look uh, for this product. And uh, moving on to the fifth product, last but not least, we have uh, vitamins jelly beans. Unfortunately, this is an aggregate value. We see here more than half a billion dollar, oh, euros worth of exports towards uh, the European Union. Uh, I couldn't uh, download the exact uh, HS code, uh, but uh, yes, uh, I saw that uh, for quite some time in uh, Europe at least, there is a trend with the uh, jelly beans uh, vitamins for children and uh, young adults. And uh, here you could either make a distribution agreement with the producer or you could find a private label manufacturer and uh, import the vitamins uh, in your country. Of course, keeping in mind that uh, you will have to comply with your local laws as you might need to have uh, them tested 
before uh, being put to market or to obtain some uh, special uh, import license. Uh, there are some burdens, of course, uh, but uh, if you find a supportive exporter, distributor or manufacturer, you can definitely have all the documentation in uh, place uh, relatively quick. Anyway, uh, before I finish, remember that uh, price is not always uh, the best option when deciding um, to import from a particular country. Uh, besides uh, factoring in transport costs, uh, lead time, transit time and other logistics uh, indicators, you have to factor in the ease of uh, doing business, the red tape involved, uh, see my previous example um, with uh, Iran and uh, the United States, and of course uh, consider the duties that you have to pay when, uh, import, when importing. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that I gave you some uh, useful information today. Don't forget to comment and of course destroy the like and uh, subscribe buttons. Until next time, keep your business safe. Thanks.